Hello, hello, it's probably Sharon. Welcome back to my channel. I have a really exciting project today. We are going to make a totally flat journal. Look at this. Look how easy it will be to write in. It is held together with tabs. So there's no sewing involved. You don't have to do any pamphlet stitching. You don't have to use your sewing machine. I've kept even the stuff I decorated it with doesn't have any sewing today. So if you don't like to sew or you don't have a sewing machine, this is the perfect project for you. As well as, hello, look how flat it is. Let's take a look at the reenactment, the start of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. ah. Auntie Sharon, why are you upset? This book is so chunky. I'm having a problem writing in it. Maybe we should make one that lays flat so it's easier to write in. So you can make this journal any size that you want. If you have single sheets, you know, that are 11 by 8 and a half that you want to use, you could even make it that big if you wanted to. For the journal I'm making today, I'm sticking with 6 by 6. That will be the largest size of my pages. I think I might have a couple that will be a little bit smaller, but 6x6 six six is the main size for this. So I'm trying to recycle, of course. So what I've done is I just got some of these little flyers that come in the mail. And I had some that were exactly 6 inches wide, so I cut them down so they are 6x6. Six six. So this will be the inside of my covers. I haven't done the outside yet. But we will come to that later. So basically, I just ripped up some book page and went around the edges. Uh, just so you can see a little of that peeking through. So we'll come back to that later. Then I've got some 12 by 12 scrapbook paper. I have hard stock thickness. I have really thin thick. I have, I have several different thicknesses. So we're going to try... You know doing um, a variation just to kind of see how it turns out so what I've done is I folded it in half or cut it in half so that I end up with two six by no six by twelve sheets and then go ahead and fold those in half you can use a scoreboard if if you don't want to try to eyeball it so what we're going to try to do here, I have a few, let's see, I have four sheets that are folded in half. And I'm kind of going with like a B theme, kind of yellows. Then I've got this one that I'm going to bind from here. So it'll act as like a flip out. So that'll be kind of an example of how to bind a single sheet. And then... I've also done a couple of small signatures, and I'm trying to stay away from sewing. So I've actually stapled this one. I think there's four. I put four sheets, four or five in here. So we're going to see what it's like to do the tab binding using a variety of pages and even some signatures. This one is very small. There's a couple sheets in there. I haven't stapled this one yet because I thought I should do one of them on camera. Of course, if you want to do the three hole pamphlet stitch, you can. There's, you know, it'll still work. So, just want to get that right on the seam. And we'll put two staples. I will um, put a link for this stapler down below because it is kind of handy to have. Regular staplers won't do that kind of thing, so it's really handy. Okay, so now I have my two little signatures. So let's put these aside. I'm going to use fabric for my tab binding today. Oh, one more thing. I am going to try to put this manila envelope in as well. It was exactly six inches wide and the color is perfect for this little journal. It goes with the colors that I'm already adding. You've probably seen these at, you know, the fabric store, these strips. They usually come in a roll, kind of like this. I do some sewing too, so 
this was kind of left over from a project I was working on before, but I thought this might be a good way to use up some of this stuff. So what I've begun to do already is I've made marks. Um, so if you think about it, I'm going to put two tabs and then three tabs, two tabs, three tabs on each page or section. So if you imagine there's five tabs running down the spine of the book and the book is six inches, that's not leaving, that's leaving an inch of margin. Um, so if I do it at one inch, so I actually did it at three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to make the little marks and cut this up into three quarter inch strips. And then I'm going to cut those in half. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the tabs sticking over onto my pages too far. So I'm going to keep it short. Um, so yeah. I think I need about 23 strips if I counted right. Okay, I should have enough strips. Now I'm going to use the pinking shears to cut them in half. And the reason I'm doing that is because, for one, they already had the zigzag shape. And I thought it would be cuter to have the little zigzag shape on the pages rather than just straight. So I'm just eyeballing it for cutting it in half. Okay, we should have plenty of little tabs for our book. Now, before I start, I want to finish the cover. Um, not finish it, but at least put on the uh, background, I guess. So, if we start and our, we have our tabs, you know, stuck on here, then when I finish the cover, they're going to kind of be covered up. So that is um, a decision that you will need to make. Do you want the tabs um, to appear on top of, you know, your decoration? Or do you want it to kind of be underneath? So in this case, I am going to want them to show a little bit. So I'm going to try to put the plate on the cover now. And since the cover is six by six, I am going to just cut it down just slightly under six by six. I'm just going to use the Elmer's to paste this down. I kind of thought ahead and I thought it might be fun to do some flip ups on some of the pages. And since I'm not sure how easy it will be to do flip ups once the book is bound, I thought maybe we could put those on now before the book is bound. Because I know it'll be easy this way for sure. So for this one, I think I'm just going to, this is another little, it's a little waterfall notebook. And I've just stapled this one as well. So I'm just going to line it up with the top of that page like this. And I need something. Pull it down a little bit so that it doesn't wiggle. I'm going to try to get it as even as possible. And then I'm going to put, actually I think I'll put masking tape on the inside. So I'm just creating a little hinge for this waterfall notebook. So I can flip that. And then... For the side that's going to be seen, I will use washi tape, and I'm going to add a little, a, a little bit of glue, just in, in case the washi tape isn't so good. We won't have to worry about that coming undone. 
same thing. And the washi tape that I have doesn't exactly go with that paper, but it's a junk journal, so. All right, there we go. So when we find our book, this is what it will look like. We're going to start with our first, our front cover. I guess our front and our back are exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter. So to start off with, we are going to put three of our tabs on the cover. And I'm going to use um, the art glitter glue because it does dry a little bit faster than the PVA glue. Um, I'm sure PVA glue would be just fine, but for the sake of time, I am going to just use this glue. So we want to kind of get an idea where these will go. I'm going to start of course with three on the front and hopefully when we get to the back cover um, we will be wrapping three around so there should be three showing on the front and back if we get to the back and we still need an extra page i'll just throw an extra page in so it'll be about like that we just want to make sure that our second page is going to have two right so we just want to make sure that there is enough room for two to fit in between the three. So maybe I'll move those a little bit just so there is a bigger gap. Maybe like this. All right. Now we're just going to paste this down. Now you could um, use double sided tape. I have double sided tape, but I don't trust it. It's old and it just. I, I just don't think it will hold. So this is why I'm using uh, glue instead. And I might need to clean that nozzle out because it is coming out very slow. All right, so we'll tack that down. All right. We've got those down. I'm going to turn it around. Actually, I'm going to get a little piece of parchment paper and kind of really make sure those are squished down. And also, I think I'm going to try to clean out that nozzle because it's going too slow for my taste. All right, I could not even get the lid off to try to clean the nozzle. So if it starts taking too long, I'm just going to go to the PBA glue. Okay, so now here is the cover that we just did. So this is the way it will be when the book is finished. So I'm just flipping it over. I'm using my lines on this mat just to help me a little bit. Okay, and so here's my first section. Okay, so the fold is here. And on this one, I'm going to glue on two. So doing this helps us see where those tabs are going to go. So they're going to go in between the three. So this is making sure that we have enough space and that we're not going to be overlapping anything. Okay, so now we can flip this over onto our cover. And now this is where we start binding them together. So just make sure it's lined up. And then we're going to take the three that were on the cover and we're just going to glue those down just like that.
Okay. So now we're just going to place it here and we're going to get our next section or page or whatever it is that we're putting on. And just continue, you know, doing the same things. So on this one, we're going to do the three, three tabs. So my fold is here. And I'm going to try to line it up with the three tabs that were on the front as best as I can. All right. Now again, we'll just flip this on top of our stack and then we're going to bring the two from the previous section and pull those up and glue those around okay now we're just going to continue on doing this until we finish with all of our pages or signatures. This next one, I think maybe I will put a signature in now just so we can see how that works. Yeah, we might have to use the PVA glue. This is just not coming out. I know the PVA glue will take longer to dry, so um, I do have an idea that we can still keep going at this pace, but uh, not have our pages stick together. We have too much glue on this now. You'll see we have some glue oozing out. So let me get a little wipe. A little bit messy. All right, so here is, because I kind of thought this might happen with that other glue. So what I've done is I've actually got some parchment paper and I'm just going to cut it into strips so that I can place it over places that we have the tabs glued down. And hopefully that will keep the pages from sticking to each other while the glue dries. Fingers crossed. So let's see. Open that up. Um, place one right there. Maybe we should do a single page so we can see how that goes. So this again, this will be a little flip out. When you're using single sheets. Quite a bit easier. I want to do the envelope next. So I thought we could go over how to do that really quick. And then I might just fast forward through the rest of it so you don't miss out on it. But, um, or I might just pause and then come back. So here's my envelope, and I mentioned that it was six inches wide. So it's a perfect size, but I do need. 
I want to make sure that this is when the page is all finished that it will be six inches by six inches. So I'm going to fold up. I'll just go down to six inches. And fold that over so that'll make a cute little pocket. Okay, so see how this last page that we have, this is the last page in my little book, other than the cover, we're ending up with three tabs and that is what we want. We want the very last section to have three tabs on it so it can wrap around to the back cover and um, yeah, so the front will have three and the back will have three. This will be our back. Make sure it's, I don't know if it matters. Does that look like it's right side up? Kind of go in all different directions, aren't they? So all we have to do on this back page, let me still. All we have to do on the back page is place it. And then just wrap those three around. I think the parchment paper that we're putting in between pages while uh, the glue dries, I think, saved us. I think if we didn't do that, we would have had a big problem. Okay, this should be pretty dry. Let's just check. So remove these bits of parchment paper. Flip through it and make sure. Everything looks like it should. Yeah. Look at that, guys. That's the spine. So I didn't line them up perfectly, but I think it will be just, it'll work. It'll work just fine. So, and I love how it opens flat. Look at that. I mean, look at that, guys. It opens flat. How awesome is that? That would be so easy to write in. 
Okay, so I want to put some things inside. We have tags. So we have lots of tags. Look at this one. So I had business cards that were this shape because the theme of the company that I worked for before had, um, that was like their theme. So what I did is I, I covered, this is only half done, of course, but like this is the side that had my name, address, phone number, or not address, um, email, stuff like that. So I just covered it. And then um, I need, still need to cover this side, but here's one that I finished completely. And I thought that would be perfect for this book because it is the shape of a honeycomb. So let's see. So that this is one that I made from one of those paint uh, cards, paint sample cards. I just put some other paper on the back and cut it into a tag shape. So yeah, I had a few of these left over from a project that I did not too long ago. A little black envelope. Maybe I could put that there. This page can't really be written on very well because it's so busy. So I think what I'll do is I will glue this down on three sides so that it can be used. Um, you know, you can use the back of it for a pocket and then the envelope itself can also be used. Just pop that on. So um, I did want to say that I got the inspiration for this book. Um, well, obviously, I was writing in my journal, and I was like, I overstuff these. I always go overboard. It's too full. It's, you know, like the pages are like this. When you're trying to write, and it's, I'm like, there's got to be a way to make a flat book. So um, I actually fell on um, Natasha at Treasure Books, and she had a tutorial um, how to do tab binding. So um, my inspiration came from her. And also a site that's called 49 Dragonflies. I also watched some of her video that she was doing tab, tag binding or tab binding. And so I just wanted to mention that that's where my inspiration came from. They didn't do it exactly like I did, but um, that's where I got the idea. So let's see, we don't need anything or, you know, we don't need something on every page, of course. Things can be clipped in. You could glue down um, a card to write on, you know, leaving a border around. You know, there's different things. So I don't want to decorate it totally, but we'll do a little bit. Okay, I found a little something, a place here. Um, I thought it was a sticker and peeled it off the paper, which was die cut. Uh, it wasn't a sticker. Or maybe the sticker part came off completely. I don't know. So I'm just left with some rough paper on the edge. Since it's an envelope, I thought I'd use a couple little old stamps. I wonder how old these are. I got them on eBay and got an envelope with like two or three hundred of them for not very much money. But I mean, they've, they've been through the mail system. They have the little lines through them. And the person that sold them to me actually took the time to take them off the envelopes, which is pretty cool. When it opens up, I did do a little bit of stenciling um, just to give the page a little more personality. See, I could just flip that in. It's just a little, this is actually off of a grocery sack. I just cut a piece off and um, I stapled it and then I put washi tape over it to kind of hide the staples on the outside. And it's just uh, cutoffs or offcuts that I made a little notebook out of. Okay, I think what I'm going to do, 
let's see. Just kind of clip these on the outside. Ah, her envelope. You know, I should have inked that edge. There, there it stands out now. And I think actually this is a perfect spot for this one. I think it would be a good idea to put something here so that in the future this can't be lifted off and taped down. Um, I think this might be too small. I'll get lost in there. Well, that we can make a tiny pocket. I know, a pocket on a pocket on a pocket. Okay, and this is our flip up. And I was thinking about putting a little tuck spot here at the bottom. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I think I'm going to use a little bit of stenciling over on this just so it's not so plain. You know, I think it might also be kind of fun to put a tab here, put a little B on one side. Maybe I should have that one facing up. Well, this one, it just, <laughs> one of these things is not like the other. Yeah, this one, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. It doesn't really go with the rest of the book. And then I went ahead and made the back cover just like the front. Maybe we can put this here. I wanted to use it somewhere, so that'll work. And I just, I love how even though we've bulked up a lot of it, it's still laying flat. Look at that. That's just a uh, dream come true for me. Maybe we can stick this in here. So I made this. I designed it. I printed it. I coffee stained it. Doesn't that look real? Isn't that cool? Maybe I'll do a tutorial on how to do that. I need something back here. All right. So I think we have the uh, inside finished. So the cover, we just need to finish the cover. I also thought it might be interesting I guess to cover the spine with fabric I mean even though you know, we have our cute little tabs um, I was thinking you know maybe it would be kind of cool to cover the spine with fabric excuse me because <clears throat> um, I do have some fabric that has bees on it We'll take a look. I don't know for sure if I'm going to do it or not. A guy with a broken leg. I'll put the glue on the broken leg very last. I hate for him to lose his leg and then his leg gets randomly stuck on there somewhere. So I don't know. Um, I don't think I've mentioned it on this video, but I started a new YouTube channel. It's called it's probably Sharon again, where I just talk about random things. You guys want to check that out. It's brand new and I could use some more subscribers. I'm also, I have a playlist on there, kind of like what it's like to start a new YouTube channel. And we're following the analytics to kind of see how fast it grows or if it grows at all. So if you're interested in that, check it out. to fix his little leg.
Okay, I'm just going to leave this be for a bit. Unintended. Okay, all done. So I decided I do want to try to put the fabric on the spine. So one thing about it, since this cover is in two separate pieces, there's not going to be really a way to fold it over on the spine, if you know what I mean. So I think what I'll have to do is cut it right to six inches and it'll just have to be ragged, which is fine because, you know, it's a junk journal. See how cute that is? All right, so what I'm going to put this on with is it's like carpet tape, like you use to secure down your area rugs or your rugs on your linoleum floor so that they don't slide around. One, two, three, four, five, six. I might just go just under six inches. Um, I'll put the link for this below. Um, it came from Amazon. Okay, here we go. So this backing hopefully will be easy. Pull off. There we go. Not so hard at all. Okay, here we go. Should hold that in place forever and ever. So, I decided that I am going to give this journal away. So, I'm not going to announce it in the title and all of that stuff. Because honestly, I think it messed up the, the algorithm on the last giveaway I did. So, I'm not even going to really announce it. But, if you want to win this... Um, just in the comments, just put, um, I'd like to enter in the comments and then let's see, what is today? I'm thinking I'm going to give it a month and then whoever says, um, I want to enter in the comments, then I will go through in a month and we will pick a winner. Um, if you do not live in the United States, though, I might have to ask you for help shipping it. That would be quite expensive to ship it overseas. So um, I don't mind paying for the shipping in the United States. But if you're overseas, I probably need you to pay for the shipping. But yeah, anyway. And one thing about it is I... When I'm recording, I have a hard time decorating the journals. When I'm just making one for myself or someone else just off camera, I usually, over the over a week's time, I will continue to add more stuff to it, add more stuff to it. Um, but when I'm on camera and it's like having to think of stuff at the moment, it's a little hard. So this might end up with a little more stuff in it. But anyway, here is our cute little journal and that carpet tape worked amazingly and I think that's so cute. I mean it was cute with the little tabs but it just adds a little extra and I really you know I needed to use this fabric for something and I didn't know so this was a good excuse. So here we here we go. I'll just do a quick last flip through make sure I didn't miss any pockets or anything. So it's lays out flat. I had lots of fun making this. I can't wait to, I actually have ideas, a few different ideas for these tab journals, but I, I couldn't fit it all in one video. So my next couple of videos might be more tab bound journals because yeah, I have a lot of ideas. So thank you for staying until the end. I really appreciate it. And remember, if you want to, a chance to win this journal, just put in the comments, I'd like to enter. And in a month from the day that I post this, 
I don't even know what date it is today. It's like the 28th. So, oh, you know, okay, so here, here we go. I'll just set a date. So August 28th, I will pick a winner or draw a winner to win this journal. Um, so yeah, thank you again for staying until the end. And remember to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day, guys.